Good morning. Welcome to worship on this glorious weekend Sunday and happy Father's Day to those of you who are dads and granddads and great granddads. We're glad that you're here with us, but we have a gift for all men today. They're in the back of the church. They're little compasses and surely in church we find our way to God. So that's a wonderful thing. Uh, tomorrow, for announcements, uh, we have postponed our nursery board meeting, and so that is postponed TBA. I'm not sure when. On Tuesday at 7 o'clock, the trustees will meet in the, in the uh, library. It says 6 o'clock in the bulletin. Please note that it is 7 o'clock for trustees. On Wednesday, the bell choir is on hiatus. We are on vacation for a few weeks, but the chancel choir is still here at 7 o'clock. If you feel like singing for this summer, why not come to a rehearsal? It's only every other week in the summertime, so it's relaxed, and I'm sure Rob would love to have you join them. On Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock, we have the men's breakfast. I'm preparing a little Bible study with a video. Um, if you're up that early and want to come, we would love to have you there. We have great conversations. Uh, next Saturday at 11 o'clock, uh, Patchwork with a Purpose. It's on the insert in your bulletin. This is Lily Edge's uh, Girl Scout project. So if you're able to help with some sewing or something of that sort, please be here at the church. Uh, next Sunday is our graduation celebration. We are celebrating all of our graduates, whether it's from preschool or college. If you're a graduate, we are celebrating you. And after church, we're having a luncheon in their honor. And so please, if you could remember to sign up so we get enough food, we want to make sure we have enough food, or call the office. They'll, they'll take down your name and the number of people. Um, also, please sign up for coffee hour. If you're able to do some coffee hour goodies, please sign up in Fellowship Hall, or once again, call the office. They'll take it down for you. And now let us begin worship by listening to the introit. Good morning, everyone, and may I take this opportunity to wish all my brothers in arms a happy Father's Day as well. Please join me in the call to worship found in your bulletin. Love circles around us. Flowing from parent to child. From one beloved to another. Never giving up. Love circles around us. Let us worship God.
Let's join together in the prayer found in your bulletin. Merciful God, you search our hearts and you know us from the beginning of life. You see more good and beauty in us that we have dared to believe. You call us by name and beckon us to do more than we have dared to try. Shine your light into our hesitancy. Embolden us to live with such joy and enthusiasm that the world around us will know of your love through us. Use our hands and arms and words so that we may be partners with you in this world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. to invite the chil children to come forward. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Romeo, good to see you. Okay. Did you guys all wish your dads and grandpops a happy Father's Day? I almost said Mother's Day. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, you know what I have here? This is almost 100 years old. This is my birth certificate. <laughs> and
And on the birth certificate, it has my name right at the top, Victoria Marie Shepherd. That was my name before I got married. And then it has my mom's name and my dad's name. And you know, before I was born, they picked out my name and they can do that because they're my parents. And the relationship we have with our parents is a very special one. But you know what? We also have a special relationship with God because God is our Heavenly Father. And the Bible says, see what love the Father, meaning God, has given us since we are called children of God. So who calls us children of God? Who? Our parents, okay. But who, who named us children of God? Go ahead, Leo. Yeah, Jesus, God, absolutely. God can call us that because God is our Father. And he loves us very, very much and watches over us and takes such good care of us. And so what are some of the ways we're supposed to behave if we're children of God? Do the right thing. What's that mean? Okay, pay attention to when people are talking to you. Okay, that's good. Oh, no arguing with siblings. That's a tough one. Okay. How about you, Leo? No fighting. Yeah, that's a good one, too. You know, and how about um, being kind to people, even if they're not family members? And then, you know what? When we act like that, people will know that we're children of God. They will say, boy, that looks like a children of God because they're doing so many of the right things and wonderful things. So let's say a little prayer. Thank you, God, for making us your children. Thank you for calling us your children and taking such good care of us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you guys can go to Sunday school. Thank you. So I was asked if I knew the name of the song. I said, I didn't know the name, but the melody rang a bell. <laughs> it's Father's Day. <laughs> a bad dad joke. <laughs> Please join me in the affirmation of faith. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba Father. In sovereign love God created the world good and makes everyone equally in God's image, male and female, of every race and people, to live as one community. In everlasting love, the God of Abraham and Sarah chose a covenant people to bless all families. Loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant, like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home, God is faithful still. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you, Rich. As we come to our time of prayer, I'd like to let you know of some of the concerns of our family of faith. We are continuing prayers for Dave McCann, Ken Heck, Cynthia Mario, Neil Gamble, Lexi and her family, Fran, James, the son-in-law of Susan Lothian, Carl, Mary Lou Crimbring, who I'm happy to report is out of the hospital recovering from pneumonia and COVID. Uh, she's very weak, and so we need to keep her lifted in our prayers. We're praying for Dara Quatrone. She's healing after surgery this week and doing quite well. We're praying for John Agner's Aunt Emma and his mom. Uh, we're praying for Linda Donovan's mom, Gladys, who is also recovering from COVID and a hospital stay. And so she's recovering, and we give thanks for that. 
We're praying for Steve Jacoby's grandson, Kevin, Carl Ekstrom, Jenny Beck's friend, Kathy, Barbara Giorgio. I meant to take Barbara off. She asked me to take her off. You know, once you get on the list, it's hard to get off because we keep praying for you, for goodness sake. Um, we're praying for Jean Ponteri. She just went to Villa Raffaella over the weekend, and she's, you know, transitioning into what it's like to live there permanently. And so we need to keep her in our prayers. We're pl praying for Julie Duncan, who is doing much better after pneumonia. And we have a joy to report. Justin Gooden uh, was sworn in as a class one police officer in, in Margate. He was only one of two. So we give thanks that we're gonna be safe because of Justin Gooden. Are there any other joys or concerns to share? Yes, Bob. I'm sorry, say that again. John, okay. Okay, let's join our hearts and minds in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, parent of all creation, we come before you people from many different families, people with different jobs. We come from many walks of life, but you bring us together and hold us gently as a loving parent. We thank you this morning for your great love for us and the gift of your son Jesus to be our savior. Because you love us so much, you tell us to choose and use wisely all the gifts you have graciously granted us. Eternal God, our creator, you set us to live in families. We commend to your care all the homes where your people live. Let children and parents have full respect for one another and show love and affection to each other. Our culture celebrates fathers today, O oh God, and so we lift them up to you wherever they may be, whatever their circumstances. Give them grace and wisdom and love to guide and direct the lives entrusted to them so that they may lead their children to know and do what is good and acceptable in your sight. Today, Lord, we also thank you for adopting us into your family through the miracle of your grace and for calling us to be brothers and sisters to each other. May the leaders of the world remember that truth, that we are all brothers and sisters, and so need to be living in a world of peace and safety. Be with all those in our family of faith who are in need. You have already heard the concerns of our church family. Whatever the need, Lord, we know and believe that you have the power to help. We bring to you now those concerns that are held silently in our hearts. Grant us your peace. We pray your blessing on each one here and the homes and families we represent. Help us to begin this new week with courage, knowing that you walk beside us every moment. We ask all these things in the strong name of our Savior Jesus, who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue our worship by presenting our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for making us your children. We bring these gifts this morning as a portion of what you have already given to us so that others may know that they are also your children. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture passage this morning comes from Paul's letter, first letter actually, to the Corinthian church. It's a popular one. You've heard it before, I'm sure, words about love. So listen for God's word to you this morning. Paul writes, though I speak with the tongues of mortals and of angels and have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have all prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, or faith enough to move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Will you pray with me? O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Bell ringing must have made me thirsty this morning. I don't know. When I was at my seminary reunion last month, one of my friends gave me a copy of a wonderful paper entitled The World According to to student bloopers. It was compiled by a man named Richard Letterer. Honestly, I don't know who that is. And it's a humor humorous list of student bloopers collected by teachers of young students from many places with actual quotes from essays and tests. So here, one student wrote this. The inhabitants of ancient Egypt were called mummies. They lived in the Dara Desert and traveled by Camelot. <laughs> Camelot. Another gave this answer on a Bible quiz. I hope you know this story. Jacob was a man in the Bible who stole his brother's birthmark. <laughs> One kid said the Greeks had many myths. A myth is a female moth. <laughs> I'm glad he explained that. <laughs> A student of American history gave this description of Benjamin Franklin. Franklin had gone to Boston and invented electricity by rubbing cats backwards. <laughs> Franklin died in 1790 and is still dead. He got that part right. One student gave this definition. History calls people Romans because they never stayed in one place for very long. <laughs> I love this one, actually. Nero was a cruel tyranny, not tyrant, tyranny, who would torture his poor subjects by playing the fiddle for them. <laughs> if you have ever put a violin near your ear and heard the squeaking, that is torture. And this last one. Socrates was a famous Greek teacher who went around giving people advice. They killed him. Socrates died from an overdose of wedlock. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> now, it's obvious from these bloopers that we often miss the message. We get part of the truth, but we miss the main point. And this is exactly what the Apostle Paul was trying to say in 1 Corinthians 13. He was getting to the main point. Paul had founded the church in Corinth around A.D. 50, and he had stayed with the people there for about 18 months. 
But then he moved on to start a church in Ephesus. And then he kept getting reports of bad things happening in Corinth. As long as he was with them, they had done very well. But as soon as he left, all kinds of problems broke out. Conflicts, cliques, divisions, and power struggles were literally tearing the church apart. Jealousy, greed, and hostility were running rampant, and all in the name of religion. How could this happen? Well, the Corinthians had gotten a taste of religion, but they missed the main point. They missed the main message. So like a father teaching his children, Paul had to deal with the Corinthians. The first 12 chapters of this book dissects their mistakes and misunderstandings And the last verse of chapter 12 says, now let me show you a better way. He's sort of saying, here it is. You want the key to life? You want the secret of life? And then he launches into chapter 13 that I just read, which is often called the love chapter. Now, obviously, it's read at weddings very often. It's very strong and powerful words about love and getting along with each other. And Paul is just really saying the same things that Jesus said over and over. Love is the key, the secret, the answer. Love is the one thing that's always right. Love is the major ingredient in any happy family. Love shows discipleship and spiritual maturity. Love is the single most powerful thing in the world. If we miss love, we miss the main point, and we actually miss God. So what better thing to think of this morning on Father's Day than this question? How do we teach children to be loving persons? When I've asked people this question, the number one answer always is, by example. Right. So how do we do that? Well, of course, I have a few suggestions this morning. First, we can teach our children to be loving by showing them respect, to have respect for others and for themselves as people. I was standing in line at the ShopRite in Absecon. It's one of my least favorite stores in the world, except maybe castles in the summer, but that's beside the point. Anyway, as I was standing in line to check out, there was a family standing in front of me arguing about whether or not to buy candy for the little boy that was with them. I couldn't believe the horrible expletives the dad used for that little kid. And then the mom got involved and used more expletives to the father for the way he was acting. Now, I'm no Miss Pris. I know these words, but it just felt horrible. And I felt uncomfortable hearing people call each other this in public. Even when we have to say no, I think we can say it with respect. That child had a horrible lesson that day on ways to treat others and how we speak especially to a spouse or a family member we're supposed to love. Whether it's a family member or a stranger, we always need to remember that everyone is a child of God, a human being, a person of worth. And one of the ways we teach our children to be loving people is to be patient with them and others. I ran across an article in a magazine called How Fathers Mature. It's really about the different transitions children go through over the years, not dad. But see if any of this sounds familiar to you. I'm four years old, and my daddy can do anything. I'm seven years old, and my daddy sure knows a lot. I'm nine years old. And dad doesn't quite know everything. I'm 12 years old, and dad doesn't understand. I'm 14 years old, and dad is so old-fashioned. 
I'm 17 years old, and the man doesn't know anything. He's out to lunch. I'm 25 years old, and Dad's okay. I'm 35 years old, and I want to get Dad's opinion on this. I'm 50 years old, and I wonder what Dad would have said about this. I'm 60 years old, and I sure wish I could talk this over with Dad one more time. Children all go through stages, and they go off on tangents, but if we respect our kids, if they see us treating others with respect, kindness, and courtesy, we can be the school where they learn respect. They may go off after the latest fad or have problems with peer pressures, but most often they come back to the values of their families to the standards of their home, which should include the art of love. And secondly, we can teach our children to be loving persons by examples of sacrifice. People who have been forced by circumstances to sacrifice for each other develop a certain tenderness toward each other. A few weeks ago at a Memorial Day event, Men talked about some of their experiences in combat. Two army buddies talked about the way they were forced to share their rations and their water in a difficult situation that they never forgot. The experience brought on a certain camaraderie. There is something about sacrifice that causes a certain feeling of love. I heard about a Stockton graduate a few years ago, and I'll tell you about that, but I saw in the newspaper just the other day pictures of graduations. One was of Stockton, and you know the mortar boards that everybody wears on their head as a graduate. Somebody had on there, I did this for, and then had four pictures of people probably in their family, I don't know. But I heard of a graduation a couple of years ago at Stockton where a young woman received her diploma, got out of line, and walked right over to her parents, and she handed her diploma to them. It almost made me cry when I heard about it, and the three of them were crying when this happened. I'm sure that girl was saying, we did this together. I'm here because of you. I know how you sacrificed for me. Lastly, we can teach our children and our grandchildren to be loving people by the example of Jesus. The best thing we can do for our kids and our grandkids is to introduce them to Jesus and the church. Trust me when I tell you, I introduced my kids to Jesus. They were in church all the time, but you notice how they're both in church now. No. So I'm bringing the grandkids to make sure that they're introduced to Jesus. The best thing we can do for them is to let them know about God's love. If Christ has a powerful place in our lives, that's what the children see. And if they catch the spirit of love from us, more than anything else, it can make them a genuine loving person. But it must be more than a spiritual nod to religion. It needs to be a personal, ongoing friendship with God. Let me give you an example. During World War II, a young man left to go overseas. A few weeks after he left, his wife gave birth to his baby son. Back in World War II, soldiers didn't have a tour of duty. They stayed until the war was over. I remember my own dad saying he was there for three years, nine months, and five days. And this guy in the story was there for over five year, three years as well. The young soldier never got to meet his son or see him. The wife tried to overcome this problem by making it a ritual each night for the baby and then the toddler to kiss his daddy's picture goodnight. They did this for three years. The day finally came when, thankfully, the man came home. And that night, for the first time, he had a chance to participate in the bedtime ritual. 
he helped give the little boy a bath, get him into his pajamas, and the three of them said prayers together. The boy's mom said, okay, honey, you can kiss your dad goodnight. Well, you know what happened. The kid reached over, grabbed the picture of his dad, and kissed the picture. Well, obviously, it wasn't long before he understood that dad was sitting right there and not just a picture. But I think that's a parable for us. For many people today, their religious experience is still kissing the picture. They haven't really accepted God into their lives. When they do, if they do, God will love them right back and love others through them. If we want our children in this world, not just maybe our children, but everyone's children, to be loving people, we can teach them to love by showing respect, by our sacrifices, and by introducing them to God. Every day of our lives, I think we would benefit by hearing the words of Paul saying, faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, teach us how to love so that we may be examples of your love, not just in our homes, but to everyone we meet. Use us, we pray, and love the world through us. We pray in the name of the one who is love incarnate, Jesus, our Savior. Amen. And now let us sing together our last hymn, number 710. We're just singing verses 1 and 3. I hope you'll join us for coffee hour in Fellowship Hall after the service. Um, I want to wish all guys who are dads happy Father's Day and granddads the same thing. And now when you leave here, remember to show respect, remember to show love, remember to show the Lord to others. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship, strength, and peace and love of the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those whom you love today and forever. Amen. Amen.